specifically the Ogallala Aquifer. A portion of the conclusion of the Affirmative Constructive Team is, I quote, the proposal of the Keystone XL pipeline will create jobs in a safe and efficient manner. Yet before the government forcefully intervened, the plan of TransCanada, the oil company, was to route the pipeline through the um, Nebraska sand hills. Now, according to Ms. Kennedy, the decision to route the Keystone XL pipeline was voluntary by the um, TransCanada. However, according to the Omaha, um, Omaha World Herald newspaper, this is not the case. The sand hills sit directly on top of a portion of the Ogallala Aquifer, which provides 78% of the region's drinking water, 83% of irrigation water in Nebraska, and 30% of U.S. irrigation water for, now, for agriculture. If any oil were to spill into the sand hills, the oil would quickly filter down to the aquifer, making water unusable for nearly 2 million people and approximately 39,601 Nebraskan farms. This would result in job loss. In its first year of operation, the currently existing Keystone Pipeline has already leaked 12 times. This is utterly unacceptable when it puts the health of so many people and animals in jeopardy and contaminates so thoroughly the surrounding area. It is considering the government's recent intervention, it is clear that TransCanada did not have safety in mind when creating the route for Keystone XL Pipeline. My second contention addresses the fact that the spill rate of the already existing Keystone Pipeline is 100 times more than TransCanada's predicted pr prediction of pipeline spills, according to both the Huffington Post and Cornell University. Professor Stansbury at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln has recently conducted a test on the Keystone XL Pipeline. He found that although TransCanada had predicted 11 significant oil spills in a 50-year time span, a more realistic estimate would be 91 significant spills. TransCanada has already had 12 significant oil, no, 12 spills in their Keystone pipeline, one significant, 11 minor, and no matter how, we have concrete evidence that these pipes are not spill proof, no matter how careful the companies vow to be, as Ms. Kiveny has demonstrated when she stated that Keystone pipeline passes 57 American standards. But we cannot trust that crucial bodies of water like the Ogallala Aquifer and 200 rivers that the proposed pipeline would cross will remain safe and uncontaminated. My third contention is that the estimate of jobs created by Keystone XL Pipeline advertised by TransCanada is an unrealistic and inflated number. The Perryman study conducted by TransCanada predicted 20,000 jobs would be created by Keystone XL Pipeline. This fact was backed up by Mr. Meyer. According to Cornell University, CBS News, and Michael Levi of Foreign Relations, however, the study was poorly done and, quote, dead wrong. Data supplied by TransCanada to the State Department even says that in reality, the pipeline would only create 2,500 to 4,652 jobs. Texas residents, including farmers, have recently been confronted by oil companies who want the right to build pipelines on their land. The oil companies offer to pay the landowners, but if the landowners refuse to let the oil companies build, oil company can condemn the land, and after the land goes into a state of eminent domain, the oil company can build even against the landowner's will. TransCanada has 89 eminent domains in Texas alone. Finally, as the affirmative has clearly not met its obligation to prove its case, and as the rules prevent it from introducing new contentions or evidence in its rebuttal, I am sure that the judges will wish to award the debate to the negative constructive team. Thank you.